Donnie, Donnie, Donnie. Uh, Democrats. Democrats. Yesterday, they unveiled their new midterm campaign slogan, For the People. And they say it sums up the party's position on three core issues, health care costs, infrastructure projects, and efforts to expose corruption. Their first try, a better deal, never really seemed to resonate with voters. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, first of all, what you think of the For the People slogan uh, and whether it has uh, what it takes to, to break through the noise. Joe, I'm actually meeting with uh, Tom Perez, the head of the DNC, next week to talk about messaging. And boy, that is not the answer. Talk about a generic non starter. Here is the campaign, here is the message they need to run. This is the vote of your lifetime. This is for democracy. This is for freedom. If you take about the things we've been talking about today, basically Republican Party, they don't even want to protect elections. They won't even pass a bill that allows us to make our elections safe. The Republican Party thinks it's okay to side with a thug Putin versus siding with our intelligence community. The Republican Party chimes along with a president that says the press is the enemy of the state. Protect your grandchildren. Your grandparents fought for these things. Freedom of speech, freedom of body, freedom of election. It is right. the vote of your lifetime. That is the yeah. message. Yeah. You know, John Heilman, um, what a dream it would be to, to be a Democrat running against a Republican this year. Uh, you have these issues that resonate every two years. One, uh, Washington corruption and cronyism. You take all the collected scandals of everybody that Donald, you, you say, have Donald Trump saying, I appoint only the best people, and then tick off the laundry list of corruption. You can have, you know, that classic scene of the fat guy sitting around the table where, you know, with expensive ties and drinking wine and cutting steaks, and just do the laundry list of all the corrupt practices of every one of Trump's people. That's, I mean, that's your way in. Then you can talk about uh, the fact that health care is being attacked by Donald Trump. That's powerful, and Republicans and Democrats alike vote for that. And then finally, you've got the fact that Donald Trump was bragging to billionaires at Mar-a-Lago hours after he signed the tax bill. And in his words, he said, quote, I just made all of you a lot richer. Cronyism loopholes, you know, pre-existing conditions, Donald Trump's America. I, I, there are so many ways to savage Republicans in all 435 districts. Right. And then on top of all that, Joe, that there's just the, the, the personal conduct of the president, which on so many fronts is obviously not offensive at all to his base and to a, 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 a large uh, not a majority of the country, but a, a, a decent, very solid-sized chunk of the Republican base. But in swing districts among suburban women, the kinds of people among African American women, as we saw in Alabama, uh, as we saw in the in the in the off-year elections, in special elections, over and over again, these swing voters, uh, Republican women uh, in suburban uh, places, uh, Democratic uh, base voters, the way the president has just behaved, in addition to the policy. Uh, points that you made, yep. in addition to the corruption points, then there's the president as the overarching thing in our politics who is so deeply offensive to so many of the voters who make the difference in those districts that Democrats have to win. And, and that's, that's the motivator across America to get the base out, to get a lot of Democrats out, to get independents out, to get Republican women out. We saw in the Alabama race where you actually saw a higher percentage of black voters in Alabama right. voting in an off-year special election than they did when Barack Obama was running for president of the United States. That's going to happen. You put on top of that a message about cronyism, about corruption, about loopholes for Trump's richest billionaire friends, about people's health care being taken away so they can give away those massive tax cuts that Donald Trump bragged about at Mar-a-Lago to his billionaire friends hours after he signed the bill. That is a very potent campaign message. And if Democrats can't win with that, well, Democrats, 
we'll never be able to win. Coming up, NBC's Andrew Mitchell joins us after surprising the director of the National Intelligence with news that Vladimir Putin had been invited to the White House this fall. Another happy surprise for Republican candidates trying to run away from Donald Trump kowtowing to an ex-KGB agent. Plus, the president tweets about the topics he and Putin discussed during their alone time, but senior U.S. officials have no idea how to follow up on any of it. They also don't know whether he's lying or not. You know why they don't know why he's lying or not? Because all you have to do is look at his Twitter feed to see he lies all the time. Morning Joe coming right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.